Hi Virgo, welcome to your reading. If you're new to the channel, I do timeless readings, which means that whenever you find this video is when you're meant to hear the messages within it. And in case you subscribe, I upload my new videos for Virgo and Pisces on Saturdays. So, I do want to let you guys know that the deck that I'm using today is called the Deviant Moon Tarot. And as always, if you guys are interested in a personal reading, my information is in the description below. So I do want to give you guys a heads up because sometimes the cards like to flip over in the deck and I do see them. However, I really only take the cards that jump out like these ones have. And my goal here is to get you guys roughly eight or nine cards and then we can get started on your reading. So I'm just going to keep shuffling here get about five or six more cards and then we can get started All right, Virgo. So I do want to let you guys know that in case you enjoy the reading, the best way to let me know is by leaving a like or a comment. But your overall energy here is the Eight of Cups. Now, the Eight of Cups is an energy about walking away. So that tells me that I think you guys have been a little bit too dead set on an idea that just hasn't been panning out lately. And either you're walking away from the idea in itself and just trying something new, or you're leaving the situation behind in a way where you still have your ideas, uh, but you start to see that success instead of, you know, the negativity of the situation that you've been sort of involved in. But I do want to talk about this over here because you have a lot of positive cards. Actually, so before... I I just, let me just talk about the positive cards for a little bit. You have the Six of Wands, which talks about victory and success. And then on top of that, you have the Sun card, which is literally the happiest card in the tarot. So, you know, regardless of what uh, has been going ar on around you, you're going to see success and victory here soon, right? Even if it doesn't quite feel that way. But like I was saying... You have your Six of Wands here, which is very symbolic in the sense that it represents somebody who's gone out to war and come back and won. So I'm thinking that for a lot of you guys, you feel like that. You feel like you've been sort of trudging along in this path or in this situation, and now it's kind of all been said and done. It's over and done with, and you're emerging victorious, which, you know, I think you knew going into the situation that you were going to, and I don't think it was ever a big deal. I think more than anything, it's just the fact that you had to do it and you had to go through with it in the first place because that means less resources for you. And I think it was very difficult for you and probably even more difficult than you expected. I think that with this Seven of Pentacles here in reverse, uh, there is sort of this expectation that you're going to get out of a situation, whatever you put in, which I mean is pretty intuitive, but I think that what was going on here is that you were kind of putting in work and you know you were getting less than what you were putting in back so maybe you're getting like a tenth of what you got or maybe if you were lucky like a half of the energy that you were putting in right and that's why this is in the reverse but you know the fact that you have this six of wands here tells me that you guys are going to see victory here soon so you know, whatever this energy here is of I'm doing work, but I'm not being recognized for it is it's going to turn around and do a complete 180. And, you know, it's going to be a situation where you start to put in work and you get 10 times back. And I see that with the temperance here. So the temperance is representative of the sign of Sagittarius. So for some of you guys, that might be relevant. 
If it's not, then that's no big deal. But if it is, then that's just extra confirmation. What is more important about the temperance card is that it's a card about balance and proportions, right? So the example I always like to give with the temperance card is if you're, uh, let's say, doing a recipe like baking a cake, you don't put in the same amount of every single ingredient, right? So if you put in uh, equal parts flour and equal parts like vanilla extract, that cake is most likely going to be poisonous. So with the temperance card, we know to take things in moderation, but we also know proportions. So I'm thinking that whereas in the past, you were getting less out of what you were putting in, now you're gonna get a lot more of what you, uh, yeah, you're gonna get a lot more based on the same amount of effort that you were putting in before. And as a result, it's sort of all gonna even itself out in a weird way. And it's a little bit less than perfect, but I mean, it's nice to know that you're going to be recognized for your efforts here soon, right? And, you know, I kind of couched that efforts uh, talk in the sense of like a work, because in my mind, it felt like work. It felt like you weren't really being recognized at work. But this can also apply to love. It can also apply just to your home life uh, or any other aspect in your life where you're feeling kind of like you're putting in more work than you're getting back. Either way, we have here the Six of Pentacles. Now, the Six of Pentacles to me is a very interesting card because I like to think about it as sort of the foil to the Four of Pentacles. Whereas the Four of Pentacles talks about selfishness and keeping your resources to yourself, this card is about giving, is about being generous. So when it's in the reverse, I know it can mean one of two things. Either you guys are being overly generous to the it's like to a fault to where it's hurting you, or you're being sort of generous for the wrong reasons, right? I forget who it is that gave the quote, but it's not important what our actions do, but like what we do when nobody's looking. So I think we need to take a step back and sort of analyze why we feel the need to feel generosity, uh, why we feel the need to give, right? So this is sort of telling you like, if you're going to give, do it for the right reasons. Don't do it out of obligation. Don't do it out of, or not even out of obligation, but like out of like feeling. Okay, so don't do it out of obligation and don't do it overly. Don't overdo it is what I'm trying to communicate here. And I'm thinking that for a lot of you guys, you might be having a little bit of a difficult time really express expressing your ideas because we have the King of Swords here and we have the Ten of Swords right here, right? So this to me is very mental energy. So the King of Swords, I feel, is like the energy that you guys are, or rather, were in. Uh, and it feels like you guys kind of... We're going smooth and steady, and then it just kind of like dropped off, and now you're back on that energy again, right? So the King of Swords is very smart, is very uh, business savvy, is able to really read a situation. You know, this is sort of like a lawyer energy. So this person knows performance. They know how to communicate anything that has to do with the mental realm, right? <clears throat> They're uh, always that analysis. Like, it's all up here in the head, basically. And I do want to point out that Virgo is actually the sign, is ruled by Mercury, so you guys are natural born communicators to begin with, but it's almost here like there's been a great tragedy or some sense of betrayal. It's almost like your words are betraying you, right? So it's like you say things in your head and maybe they come out a different way or maybe you try to put out things in a certain way and they just don't, right? So it's like, if you take a little bit more time to really think out what you want to say and make sure it's in a way that's like inoffensive and, you know, not very combative uh, because that's an issue that Virgos can have, right? You guys are the sign of uh, communication, right? You guys are ruled by Mercury, but you guys, or you guys excel is analysis, scrutiny, like anything where you're like putting a microscope out, up to something and really looking at the nitty gritty of the details, that's where you guys excel. But that's also where people have most of their uh, hangups, right? Because most people like to just paint with a single stroke and things get a little messy. So know where to, you know, stab your swords, where to scrutinize, uh, where to, basically what I'm telling you is to pick your battles because Sometimes it's going to be easier for you in the long run to just smile and nod, right? And I feel like you guys know this, uh, and you guys have been doing your best to do this, 
because you have your six of cups, or sorry, your six of wands here and your sun card. So I feel like you guys are succeeding, right? And that involves um, sort of these more less than intuitive kind of social how do I want to phrase this? See, like, this is the ex exact thing that I'm saying. Like, you guys are taking extra time to really plan out your words, and that's making things able to be communicated in a way where nobody really gets their feelings hurt, and, you know, you're not burning any bridges. But the last two cards that I want to talk about here are the Four of Wands in reverse and the Sun card. So, the Four of Cards, sorry, the Four of Wands is a card of commitment. It talks about my, I like to call it the level up in commitment card so even if it's not like a romantic relationship it could mean like committing to an idea right but because it's in the reverse it feels like you're not committing to this idea uh or you're releasing yourself from it and then you have the sun card so you know like this can be a difficult pill to swallow again for sure um sometimes we get really attached to, th to things but this card combination um, with the Four of Wands in the reverse, with the Eight of Cups and the Sun card. Like, this is telling us that if you find the things in your life that you are attached to and are not serving you and you release those things, you walk away from them, you're going to see the success um, and the happiness from the Sun card and the success here with the um, Six of Wands. So don't commit to an idea just because you had it. And, you know, don't commit to a person or even, like, a failing relationship just because you, you know that it's comfortable, right? Like, it can be very difficult to leave relationships, but if you feel like you're not alone, no longer happy and that you would be happier with another person, like, obviously work within reason and, you know, analyze your situation because that's what you guys are, are best at, like I was saying. So I trust that you guys are going to make the right decision, especially since we have the Six of Wands and the Sun card here to confirm that. So either way, Virgo, that was your reading first time around. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please leave a like or a comment because it really helps out the channel, and I personally really love to know if these readings resonate with you guys. But like I said before, I upload many Virgo videos on Saturday, but in the meantime, you guys are more than uh, welcome to watch any of my other timeless readings that I have up on the channel. And with that being said, I hope to see you guys next time for next reading.